By now, I know that you are an African entrepreneur on the continent, an African entrepreneur around the world, but you've started your journey to be part of Africa's business heroes. And even though I don't know each and every one of you individually, I can already feel that the word proud should be used. Like I said before, my name is Anita Erskine. And if you're joining us, wherever you're joining us from, you are extremely welcome, if I may say, to the ABH family. Today, we're going to be going over conversations with some of our heroes, with our judges, with our partners. And at the end of the program, we also have an opportunity to jump into a series of conversations. We're going to be jumping into smaller rooms where we can extend the conversation across industry from agriculture to IT to education and training. We have it all available for you. But before we go on to, into those breakout sessions, we need to bring you a big conversation. The conversation about convincing your audience why your business is essential and why your business will answer some really important questions and satisfy some concerns that your audience may have. So if I do have your attention, I would like to start off this great conversation by telling you a few things about the power of storytelling. Now, the continent of Africa is really essentially divided into so many powerful countries, sometimes 53, some say it's 54, but whatever it is, as much as we are divided, we are truly one. But as much as we are one, we're also very, very different. Through ABH, I've had the privilege of traveling this continent from the southern part to the northern part of course, I'm in Ghana, so I'm in the Western, and then I've also seen the beautiful East. When it comes to dealing with the power of sharing your story, the one thing that I would encourage you to do is to be absolutely original, because you are. You are original. There is not one single individual, whether you are applying or you finished applying for ABH, who is the same as the next. And I'm gonna say this on behalf of the ABH family, it's the one thing that we've seen. Even when two companies do provide the same service or the same product, they are beautifully different. And so in that power that you have right now of applying, finishing your application, and hopefully just seeing yourself grow into the ABH family, my biggest word of advice to you is not to forget to be authentic. Be authentically Egyptian. Be authentically South African. Be authentically Zimbabwean. Be authentically you. Do not look at what the person next to you is doing to replicate what they're doing, but do remember that the source of your business comes from you, comes from your heart, comes from your experiences. So we ask you to be authentic. Now, the next thing is, you know, Africa is created I would say out of the many, the plethora of problems we have, you know, when people talk about Africa, some may say, you know, people don't say the nice things about Africa. People don't celebrate Africa enough. People only talk about the problems that we have. Okay, fine. So we do have problems as a continent. We do have issues, but this new generation of Africans is thinking about the other side of the story thinking outside of the box. And outside that box means being able to find the solution. We are the solution to the continent's problems. And as many times that we may sit on a plane and go to the other side of the world, we truly are the continent's solution. And it's time to sell it. Let your business outline how you appreciate the problem. But at the same time, sell the concept of your business being the solution to the problem. After all, isn't that why you are an African entrepreneur? Are you an African entrepreneur because it's the nice thing to do or it's, it's, it's the wonderful thing to do? No, because it is the right thing to do at this time. Why do you think we use the slogan, it's African time? Because it's time for us to find our solutions to our problems. No one else can solve those problems for us. So it's essential that you know that we know you are the solution. What we need you to do is sell it. Sell the idea like it's the last thing you need to do before you get off the earth. Sell the concept. Know that your audience is waiting to hear who you are 
and what you have to provide. You are the solution. You are nothing less. You are Africa's solution to Africa's problem. When you have a business, and as I said before, some of us create businesses because the business comes out of our heart or the business comes out of a, of a necessity. Listen, we've been doing this for the last, what, three, four years. And every single story you hear blows your mind because the origin of the business is always a personal experience, maybe not necessarily even happening to the person, but happening to someone close enough for them to say, hey, you know what? This is such a big issue. It's such a big problem. And I feel driven to create a business that solves this particular problem. When you create that kind of business, you know who your audience is. You're not going to go look for your audience and see, listen, you know, will people be happy about this or what? No, you know they need it. You know they want it because you know your audience. If by now you don't know your audience, you know, hey, it not, it's not all lost. And that's why we are ABH, because sometimes we see something that you don't. But I do hope you know your audience because it's to your audience that you have to appeal to. We have judges. We have so many great judges. And they will not stop till each and every one of you, top 20, top 10, understand the purpose of your business. But you know your audience. This is the time to show them. This is the time to convince them that what you have created, a product, a service, is the answer they're looking for. And you need to tell us why you know your audience. Because when you are in that factory, when you were in that engine room, when you were in that bedroom, because I know a lot of you do run your businesses from your homes, you knew that you were creating something because somebody needed it. Who is that somebody? Tell us who the person is so that we understand, so that your audience not only understands you, but they're also convinced about who you are and they also buy into your big African dream. You are currently on a path now, I know it's so hard. I know it's so difficult. A lot of people, the biggest complaint is, listen, Anita, where do I get the, the capital from? You know, where do I get the right kind of uh, um, resources? And that's why we're here. You've logged on today from different parts of the world, from different parts of the continent, because nobody understands your situation more than we do. But as you are on a path, the only way that we can help you to stay on the path and achieve the goal and achieve the dream is if you are consistent. There's only so much we can give you. Listen, you can win your share of the $1.5 million prize. Hooray, wow. You can be part of the top 10, fantastic. The moment you click send on that application, you are automatically part of the ABH family. But you are in your path. And the only person who can be on this path, be effective, live the African dream is you. So you've got to be consistent. And that is where sometimes the difficulty is because we, you know, we're, we're sometimes big dreamers. You know, I, I want to do this tomorrow. No, 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 no. I, I think I want to do that. No, you have to be consistent. And you have to understand that with the consistency comes growth. With growth comes impact. And with impact comes reaching the goal that you set off or you set in the beginning. Don't forget the goal. Finally, I'm a, an advocate for women. And I'm in rooms where other women are. And in these rooms sometimes, and I'm just, I'm just gonna segue a little bit to my sisters. We don't believe that we deserve to be in that room. But let me tell you, the power of who you are, who you've become, the lessons you've learned is in knowing that you deserve to be in that room. Now to my brothers and my sisters, this conversation we're having today is not only to convince you why it's essential to finish your application, it's to tell you that you deserve to be here.
Nobody deserves to be in this place more than you. So if you woke up this morning doubting if you should, listen, should I even finish this application? Oh, I, I don't even have the time. I would agree. Yes, things happen, but you deserve to be in this place. You deserve to finish that application. You deserve to be in the top 50, the top 20, the top 10. You deserve to be part of the ABH family because it is your time. It's not just my time. It is also your time. So this space, I'm in my office right now in Accra, Ghana, and I'm loving the space I'm in, not just because of its aesthetic, no, but because of the impact the space allows me to make. And I don't apologize for it. It took me years to understand how to build a business. It took ABH to show me why I needed to build the business. And I honestly have no apologies, but I own the space. I own the space, not just because there's a seat for me at the table, but because I believe my business has answers. And at ABH, we believe you are the solution Africa has always been waiting for. So if you heard me loud and clear, all I wanted to say, it's African time. And those three words are dependent 100% on each of you, each of you Africans, from the north to the south, to the east, to the west, in the diaspora, it's your time. So if you're breaking down because things are hard, and if you're lost because COVID just threw you off, or if you've been looking for this capital and you've been knocking on doors and they're not opening, I am single-handedly as an individual, as an entrepreneur, and then I'm here on behalf of the ABH family to say it is your time time. It's African time. And you are the solution Africa has been waiting for. My name is Anita Erskine. And with those words, I want to bring the conversation even broader. I've got individuals joining us today who have been through the mill, where you find yourself today, waiting to finish your application, wondering if you should finish, I've got some individuals who are here to tell you that major story. Before we go and remember what I said, tell us why it you are deserving. Tell us why it's African time. So I'm gonna start off this conversation with five outstanding heroes. On your screen, you can see five points that apply to each and every one of these heroes. The five points you can see on your screen, and even more, are what our heroes did. And that's why they are where they are. So without talking too much, I've already said what I have to say. I would like to invite our winner, the founder of Traxi Labs, and that moment when Khadija was winning 2021 ABH first prize, oh man, it was mind blowing. Khadija, how are you, my sister? I'm fine. I'm happy to see you. Very excited. I am, I am more happy to see you. I am more happy to see you. Khadija, we have men, women, individuals from across the continent. And there's no better way to convince them why they deserve this place than to start with the person who cried and screamed. And I mean, it was crazy. But Khadija, let's, let's go back a little bit because it's also important for us to grab the authenticity of your story. Before you applied, and when you did see the call to, call to action, you know, the call to apply from AB8, what went through your mind, Khadija, before you opened that link and said, I'm going to apply? Tell us that story really quickly. Yeah, sure. So actually, one thing, I, I'm not sure if, if everyone, um, it or not, I said it in one, only one uh, place before. So I actually applied two years ago. So after knowing uh, Omar from uh, and seeing that he won the second place in 2019, I just directly went ahead and I applied. And we didn't even make it to the top 50. So we were completely like out of the, out of the top 50 and we didn't even make it. 
So that's no, 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 Khadija, Khadija, don't go too quickly. Wait, 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 wait. This yeah. is important. So you had applied before. Yeah, I applied before this year and we didn't even make it to the top 50. So, like, I, I felt it's impossible. I, I, I felt like, oh, this is a, a huge competition. This is, this is really big. And, and honestly, Anita, at that time, it, it made sense that we didn't go through because compared to the years that I've seen on that year, we didn't have that much progress and impact. And that's why the, the morale from the story is we didn't give up. We just went ahead. And after the years of progress, we just applied again. And now we are the winners. So I'm just telling everyone, it's not impossible. Even, even if you even if you tried one and you fail, just try again. And don't give up. So this is just to start the story. Um, but you know, the one of the things that um, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to ask you all, please, to just be um, to just be on mute. I'm asking. You, I know you are all excited. There'll be an opportunity for you to ask questions to um, our panelists later on. But but Khadija, I think it's essential because you've talked about um, having applied before, and you've truthfully said now you look back and you see why. Now that you applied and you eventually became the winner, what is it that you had now that guaranteed that you would, you know, A, you won, but that at least that guaranteed that you would be part of the select, um, the top 10? Yeah, sure. So when reading the eligibility uh, requirements for ABH, yes, it's open to different ages. Yes, it's open to everyone out there, but it has, when you read it, you really understand what, what they are looking for. So one of the main things ABH is always looking for and asking is the impact. So the impact, not only the one that you've already done, not only the impact that you have already done, but what, how do you see your impact in the future? So maybe in, maybe in the previous year, we didn't write it really well. Maybe we didn't see our future. Maybe we didn't have that impact. But I believe that when we wrote it the second time, we already started to have impact on different countries in the world. It was not only like a local business in Egypt and we are trying to do our best. No, we really went global. We uh, took the, the COVID rather than like a, a problem. We took it as an opportunity and we started to help yeah. people everywhere. We told them that we opened an initiative to help students everywhere in the world just to use Praxi Labs for free to, to stand out and use and continue their lab work. So I feel that it's how you put it in front of the judges how you put your impact and how you put your dreams and that you're really capable of, of achieving it. They are truly searching, or when I say they, you are uh, ABH, truly mm -hmm. searching for the team and the founders and the business yeah. that can really do it. That, as you said, we want Africa to re-emerge. So making sure that these can take it to the, second, to the next level and not just be a local uh, business, for example, trying to do something small. Khadija, you've shared some very powerful words. I'm going to go to Omar right now um, because you've said something that is, is, yes, of course, we've been talking about, you know, being the solution for the continent. Um, Omar is, um, Omar Sakri is the CEO of Nawa Scientific and he's a 2019 ABH second prize winner. Um, Omar, to you, I think I, I want to find out if you probably experience the same thing that Khadija has just uh, has just described or did you have a completely different experience especially at this point when you were doing your applications um okay let me first say hello everyone it's uh, super exciting to um speak to all my fellow african friends especially that i just made it back from lagos and uh, a very very uh, inspiring experience that I would say I wouldn't have that uh, opportunity to go to Lagos unless I've been to, through the ABH. Um, hi Khadija, nice to see you as well. Thank you for the good words. Um, I cannot say that I have applied um, and then I was rejected because we were the very first round. So, <laughs> so from my side, uh, it, it was a little different. Uh, I made it from the very first shot. But I want to share uh, something with you, Anita. I, was, uh, I, I like very much the five rules that you mentioned. So if you allow me to elaborate on one specific point that very much relates to my story. Of when course. I, 
when I made it to the final uh, top 10 presentation, and then, uh, you know, we, we presented in physical in front of the one and only Jakma and the amazing Jotsai and uh, amazing, amazing judges. This is intimidating. We have to confess that. Okay, this is very much intimidating. Uh, you're, you're not talking to typical judges you find in um, uh, normal uh, startup competitions. This is top tier planet Earth level judgment. Okay, so uh, bear this in mind. Now, I'm going to the top 10. I know the top 20, we have been competing already. And every one of my competitors and my colleagues and my friends is a kick ass founder, amazing startups. It's so hard competitions. So it, the level of stress is epic. So <laughs> super level judges, super level contestants. Now, what is my chance in front of 10, every one of them, they have uh, amazing businesses. So then came that idea that actually you mentioned, I guess it was number two. So be authentic. Now I asked yeah. myself, do I have the best sales? No, I didn't have the best numbers. Do I have the, let's say, uh, the best geographical uh, or like the biggest market? Absolutely no. What I had is my story. I was the one who started even my presentation with, gentlemen, buckle up because I'm taking you for a trip to the future. And I tried to sell what would happen if you uh, uh, back a, a, a science-based startup. It's not a typical thing you will find in, in um, like a typical startup competitions. And then when I showed them or tried to visualize to them what, is hap what would happen if you backed my startup, the judges started clapping in, in the middle of my presentation. This is very rare. So they didn't even wait till I finished my presentation to start cheering up for me. They cheered in the middle of the presentation. So to everyone watching us now, the power of your story is coming from the depth that you feel it, that you live in it. Then you, when you describe that, you're actually talking from, from uh, uh, perception. Then your emotions tell the story. I guess it was number five in, in your uh, uh, yeah. enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah in, in your slide. Um, at the very last minute, I told everyone with all the passion I have in my heart, please give science and science in Africa. <laughs> it went very authentic. And you know what? This made it um, like headlines for like a month afterwards, like newspapers, <laughs> give science a chance in Africa, give science a chance. So this is what happens when you be very, very authentic, I guess. You know, Omar, I have to say, I think we're laughing about it now. Um, yes. But I remember that night, it wasn't a laughing matter at all, because Absolutely. at that point in time, your life, it feels like your life is in the hands of these powerful judges, you know, and, and, and what they say is what, you know, changes the course of, of your experience. But I think I'm honored on behalf of ABH that you would even start by talking about the parts of the continent that you're going to. I mean, you're, you, you are from, from Egypt. Um, now you're doing business in, in, in Nigeria. Um, Omar, you haven't come to Ghana, but I'm not angry yet. Um, this is not where I get angry with you. Um, but, but at that moment, Omar, where you are you know, doing your application, et cetera, is there one thing that you would say just at that moment influenced how you completed your application? If you can take us back to that moment, do you remember? Uh, to be honest, uh, I was very much intrigued by the opportunity to, to meet Jack Ma because this was the highlight of the very first round. <laughs> like uh, I said, if I made nothing but just talk to the guy, uh, I love him so much. So uh, yeah, I guess this is a very uh, honest answer to that. Afterwards, no uh, actually, yeah, yeah. Afterwards, we got the actual, uh, let's say, uh, the feeling of the actual value of the competition. And if I conclude my talk with one uh, sentence, I would love to say that uh, if I didn't make it through the ABH, um, I wouldn't have the opportunity to extend my business to Africa. To be on more, even more honest, I didn't even see the opportunity going in Africa. I have to confess that we in Egypt have like this. Uh, uh, traditional uh, expansion momentum into the um, uh, Gulf area, probably, or more in North Africa. During ABH, and because uh, it was a physical uh, competition that year, 
we already went to Kenya. We went to uh, Ghana for the finals. I had the opportunity to meet like-minded entrepreneurs, like-minded partners, investors. And then I totally realized that my expansion plan was totally wrong. I went to my board and I told them, you know what? We're not going east. We're going south. This is Africa. And we share the market dynamics. We share friends. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It is my ABH friends who hosted me last week. So cheers to Chibozo <laughs> and Ayo. I hope you guys are here. Yeah, and, and everyone from, yeah, I love them so much. They hosted me. They that's what paved it is. the way for wow. my business. Yeah. Wow. How much would this, uh, how much is the value of this? Invaluable. Invaluable. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, we, 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 I've just spoken to two um, individuals who um, were in the top, top, top. But I'll tell you something about ABH. Again, you hit up, you hit apply, you automatically, you know, you're, you're part of our family and we don't let you go. Um, and, and so it brings me to Mumful, um, MD of Golden Rewards 1981CC, 2021 ABH top 20. Now, Mumful, you are smiling from ear to ear. Top 20, my dear, you almost made it, almost made it, Mumful. Um, but I know that you have appreciation for the top 10 and we appreciate you as a, a top 20, but Mafo, if, if you're looking at what ABH means, or if I said, you know, describe what ABH means to you as an entrepreneur, what would that description be? Oh, uh, hi, Anita and hello everyone. Uh, it's good to be back home. Uh, this is home for me. And um, ABA, when I describe ABH is uh, my support system. Mm. It's my business uh, journey partner, um, a, a person that I can just um, call when I need advice or I need uh, to be connected to someone in, um, that I want to do business with. So I've been very fortunate to, um, to be part of this family and to be honest, every time when somebody uh, mentioned ABH, it's like they're calling my second name, then I'll start smiling. I'm such a big fan, it's not even funny. And for those uh, that are from South Africa, they will know. Uh, they will ask, how are you? I said, I'm fine. Have you applied? Do you know what ABH? <laughs> if you met the malls, I'll ask, have you had? So it, 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 I've been that uh, um, person who really, uh, appreciating and um, happy to be part of this family. And, uh, and, and we're happy to have you. Don't go away. Chibuzo, um, if I were sitting in front of you, Chibuzo, and, um, you know, essentially I was concerned um, about applying uh, because, you know, what I, I didn't think that I, I would make it because, you know, I run a small business. What would your advice to me be? Thank you, Anita. Um, I think I've been listening to all the wonderful um, um, sharing by everybody, and I'm always excited and blown away by the energy that, you know, ABH brings into any setting. Um, it's always palpable that fever in the room that something is about to happen is happening or has happened um i mean honestly if if you if you were lucky enough to 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 be pulled you know into this family of people who are applying for this my my advice would be you know just go out there and and give it your all give it your best because i'm a strong proponent of nothing ventured nothing gained and if you if you if you're going to try something you know give it your give it your heart give it give it all because at the end of the day right um one of the great things that that um we got told is that you know everybody shares how they made it and very few people share how how the failures happened and all that, right? And actually, we got that from Jack himself. You know, he's like, you only read, you only hear about successes. But um, the point is, you know, if you don't put your best foot forward, you're not going to, you're not going to learn. And and the great thing about applying for the ABH is that it sort of also positions you in your mental mindset 
on how you approach, you know, a lot of investors, your, your journey through growing your business, your stakeholders, because the questions and, and, and the ways you think about presenting your business and interacting with and the stories you tell and, and how, you, how you convey that impact you're making um, is all pertinent to your everyday business and, and, you know, growing your business. So my advice would be, you know, jump into it, give it your heart, give it your all, and just keep pushing. Chibuzo, what, what's the one major thing, if anything, that you learned about yourself and your business through ABH that perhaps, I don't know, maybe you didn't even want to accept in the beginning, you know, anything, is there anything that you heard you were like, excuse me, are you talking about me? Um, is there anything, and, and, <laughs> and did that change the kind of business owner uh, or, or the, the kind of um, hero you've become? Um, I think... Uh, let me think. That's that's an interesting one. Um, I I think there were quite a few interesting insights we got from the com from the judges on maybe the governance structure of the team, which we um, took to heart and worked on, and you know we're stronger company for it. And that that actually because right after the ABH, right, we went into fundraising and and we got the same similar sort of feedback and. Luckily enough, you know, it was something that we had cured before we got that. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, the judges going through all those rounds of business put under the microscope and it really helps you grow. Yeah. It, and, and, and also, if you're humble enough to listen to, 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 to the reality, right? Because sometimes as business owners, the businesses are our baby. So don't come tell me. But then if you have the humility to listen to <laughs> You were not there when I thought about the idea, but you know, <laughs> the judges give you a certain truth that nobody can give you. Um, I'm just going to mm -hmm. go to Mahmoud right now. Mahmoud, all the way from Liberia. Um, Mahmoud is CEO J Palm Liberia, and 2019 Mahmoud came on, you know, onto the scene. My brother Mahmoud from Liberia, who doesn't come to Ghana to visit, which is fine, Mahmoud. Uh -huh. Is there is there an essential is there an essential part of your business that wouldn't have grown if you had not applied to ABH? Is there? Can you tell us? Uh, uh, that's a, that's a very interesting question. Um, what what I would say is that um, ABH at the time that we participated in ABH was really an inflection point. Um, was thinking about all the work that we already done and thinking about where we were going. And I think a lot of the entrepreneurs on the call today would appreciate the fact that many times uh, when you start a business um, on a day-to-day -day basis, you're putting out fires. Every day you're working to address some major crisis. And we, we rarely really get the opportunity to, to think long-term, think strategically, take a step back um, and analyze and figure out where we want to go. And at the time, just the process of applying for ABH was an opportunity to really to take a step back and say, you know, here's sort of where we are, here's the vision, right? Because most times you do a vision statement, do a mission statement, but, but, but it's like, okay, I have this vision, but now it's like I have to address this big thing that's trying to, that's threatening the business right now. And so it was an opportunity to look back on what the original vision is, to take stock on where we are and to also look forward to where we want to go. And I think that going through that, that process uh, allowed us to reshape the vision to be where we are now. In fact, I found myself going back a lot to review the APH application document um, for internal strategy work that we were doing to reflect, to, I mean, in, in a way to just, you know, to just, um, it helps me. It, it, it helps me be more articulate, if 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 that makes sense. It, it helps me be more articulate when I want to. Um, when I'm talking to new to new staff, when I'm talking to investors, when I'm talking to new partners. So just really um, articulate what it is that we're doing, why we're doing it, and and where we where we want to go. What changed about your purpose? I mean, I, I want to believe that when you were developing your business, I mean, of course, you had your mission, your vision and all of that wonderful stuff. But is there anything that ABH kind of helped you to focus on pinpoint that perhaps you hadn't even seen before applying? Actually, um, what ABH allowed me to do was to, was to really 
think and dream big. ABS is such a massive platform in, in so many ways. Um, one is, I mean, can we just talk about the stage, right? Like the stage <laughs> and how the entire staging is done. I mean, we had the opportunity to go to Accra and it really is a show. I mean, it really is a massive platform. I've never been on that kind of platform before. Um, so that's one aspect of it. The second aspect is the caliber of the judges being in the same room as Jack Ma, as Joe, as, as Strive, you know, all of these people. And then also the caliber of the other entrepreneurs. We had the opportunity to spend some time together to really listen to each other's visions, give each other feedback and learn. Which was good. Um, and I think just given the fact that when you start a new business in, 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 like in Liberia or in, in African countries where it's so difficult to operate, there's a tendency really to think small. You know, you say, okay, I have this big dream, I have this big vision, but let's attack it one step at a time because we don't have enough resources. Um, and what ABS forced me to do was to really think about, how, about the, the fact that I actually do have very big dreams for the business um, and to yeah. be able to stand on this large scale and articulate it was almost in a way like a commitment device and say, well, it's already out there. You've already said it now, you must go and do it. So that was, that was one of the big, the big things that came out of that experience. Mahmoud, thank you very much. And thanks for your honesty. I think that's the powerful thing about, you know, our heroes. They're so honest, you know, especially at a time when we all need to hear the truth because so many applicants, and I'm sure a lot of you out there are quite nervous, quite anxious at this time. We're here to put you at ease and we're here to say we can't wait to have you join the ABH family. Thanks so much to my heroes for helping us have that conversation. Um, this conversation really um, will not be complete without me talking a bit about, you know, seven major, major, major benefits of joining the ABH family. First of all, I think all my heroes have said it over and over. You will learn about yourself and your business. And when you start a business, sometimes you do forget as you go along when you're facing issues, why you started the business in the first place. At the same time, when you start a business, one of the most painful things is that, you know, your soul tunnel vision that you can't really hear advice from different places. Now, as much as we want you to continue with your plan, continue with your, your purpose and your strategy, we also help you to learn more about your business. Now, you will receive invaluable feedback. There is absolutely nowhere nowhere where you can find the caliber of judges, the business owners, you know, uh, um, men and women in the C-suite who will stop, spend time with you and say, listen, this is how you need to redirect your business. This is how you need to re-strategize. So you will receive invaluable feedback. Now, joining an entrepreneurship ecosystem, listen, Omar has said it. Uh, uh, um, uh, Mahmoud has said it. Our heroes have talked about it. Where else do you become part of a family where you all have one goal? And that one goal is to find solutions to Africa's problems, only with Africa's business heroes. So automatically, once you apply, you are part of this ecosystem. Now let's go to, to developing your skills so that you can tell your story. Um, again, Omar talked about that moment standing on stage, that moment when he knew the one thing that would take him to the next stage was to take off every single smoke <laughs> from, from his eyes and be authentic, be real. So, so you learn how to sell that story. You learn how to tell that story. And as I said before, once you apply, you are automatically part of an entrepreneurship ecosystem. You've got brothers and sisters, and we essentially become family. We collaborate with each other. We partner with each other. We share best practices with each other. And, you know, upon occasion, we travel and meet each other in different parts of the continent or different parts of the world access exclusive mentorship and training. You never learn enough. You never know too much. You never have enough in your brain. And this is where we consistently, through our partners, through our collaborators, through the individuals who form part of ABH, provide exclusive men mentorship and training. And, and essentially, one of the things about mentorship and training is it's hard to understand or know where to get it. It's easier to get it from here because we know what you're looking for. Now, number six, 
what is it about ABH that takes you around the world is the fact that you are part of this family that understands the power of your story. So you do gain your global recognition and your exposure, not just because you won or you're top three. No, as long as you apply, we discover that you are essential talent and the world must know about you. And finally, you get to pitch to business legends and win your share of one point five million dollars. Now, let me say it again. One point five million dollars. So complete your application, join the family, and let's take you through all the various aspects of ABH that gets you to win your share of one point five million dollars. Now, let's have a conversation with the judges. Um, I, I, I'm joined by Mr. Rafa Saleh, founding partner of A, sorry, founding partner, ABH Round Two Judge, is joining us. Rafa, are you there? Hello, Anita. Hello, everyone. Rafa, I'm really excited to be your, here. your time, your time is so valuable. Um, and, and I say not just valuable today, but valuable across board. We thank you so much for uh, being a judge, et cetera. But I think it's important for us to also talk about uh, with you about the kinds of questions that our, our, our applicants are seeing. Why are these questions essential and why do they facilitate the work that you will do as a judge? Sure. Uh, first of all, let me take uh, uh, some points from every everything that everyone said, starting by Anita. First thing you mentioned, uh, among the things you said, focus on your audience. And with audience, sometimes we translate that into customers. So my word to everyone is, your customer is your North Star. And basically test the viability of whatever you are selling from the customer's mouth not from your consultant's mouth, not from your advisor's mouth, and not from, from your mentor's mouth, and certainly not from the founder's mouth. Always, always, always test from the actual customers. So that's number one. Khadija, uh, uh, Khadija we're friends uh, since uh, quite a while now. Uh, you said, try again. You've entered the competition, you've tried again, and then you've won the competition. Uh, everyone that enters this competition is actually a winner just by participating. But Khadija is just another example of resilience. And this is something that we see heavily across Africa. Everyone here is very resilient. Let's be honest. We live, we've, we've been born, we've always lived across our lives and across our careers solving problems. We do this naturally. We live in a problematic continent. And this makes us as individuals resilient. And this makes us as founders resilient and as businesses resilient as an, and as ecosystems resilient, which is very, very important. You know, don't, don't fear what's happening across the, you know, the economic slowdown across the world. You are resilient. You know, you've been through a lot. Just continue on what you're doing. Omar, you mentioned stress and how stress related it was getting into this competition. Hey guys, what Omar mentioned is not the stress, it's the positive side of stress, it's you stress. It is what Usain Bolt, the type of stress that Usain Bolt has just at the beginning of the starting line. It's the stress that gives you energy to move forward. Use that. Uh, Mampo, if I'm uh, reading the name correctly, you mentioned support system. Now this is what the ABH is all about. Capitalize on us, capitalize on the mentors, on the judges, on the network, because nowadays, especially nowadays, you have to work as a team member. Uh, Shibuzu, uh, you said, give it your all. Yes, absolutely. Now, everyone out there doing and building a business, if you're not giving it your all, if you're not giving it your 120%, someone else is. So there's someone out there doing the same thing, more or less. And if you're putting 50% of your effort into it because you have another full-time job or so, someone else is putting the 120%. And they will win the race. So put the 120%. Um, Mahmoud, you said, you know, step back, look at your, reshape your vision. Yes, we've seen also, I love a business that stepped back, revisited their vision reshaped it and pivoted 
you do not need to pivot on your full vision, but at least you can pivot on how you reach that uh, that uh, that uh, vision. And as you know, small businesses, this this agility is what makes you beat large corporates that have been in the market for decades with very very deep pockets. Uh, all I've said is just snippets of what actually happens within the ABH game. So this is a game being part of the ABH gives you access to all of that. Oh yeah. Thank you so much, Rafa. You, you made my work easy. Next time you're going to host this converse conversation. You are an excellent host. You know that? <laughs> so, so it brings me to uh, Dr. Nino Emua, who is a founder at MD Abundance um, Consulting and also an ABH round two judge. Um, Dr. Nino, you know, in, in, in the seat of a judge, and knowing that we have people who are filling out their applications right now, I mean, this is a privilege to hear from a judge how to, you know, I guess how to win. But in the seat of a judge, what's the one thing you would say that you're looking that jumps at you at an application that you would call a successful application? Maybe one or two things. Okay, first of all, I hope you can hear me properly. Is Anita, I can't Anita. believe that. We are here again, that another year has gone past, right? It's gone by really quickly. And um, good afternoon to all um, fellow judges. And it's exciting to see so many people on this call. It shows that they are interested. Now, um, as you know, and Anita said, you know, judges, mentors, we're all doing this because we believe in the power of African entrepreneurship to transform our continent. So it's an opportunity. So what sticks out to us? It is that thoroughness for me to see that the application is thorough. All the sections have been filled out correctly within the word limits. Everything that has been asked for has been provided. Now, on that basis alone, you can see that the applicant is really interested in winning. So that's the first thing. Be thorough. Fill out all the sections, all the information. Don't miss out anything and um, lack of errors. That is even before we get to the content, okay? So that's the first thing that sticks out. Once you, if you make a negative impression, it's very difficult to convince a judge to come back for that negative impression. So you must put your best foot forward in the first place and be thorough. The other thing is that, the um, second thing I'd say is that, and I, I know that um, our, our previous judge mentioned it, but we cannot mention it enough, the reason for a business to be successful is because you are solving a problem and a defined problem to the customer. So what is that problem? What is your solution? Why is it different? And why will people want to buy your product or service? So those two things need to be clear, okay? You need to make a good first impression and you must have a solution, well-defined and um, a well-defined problem and a well-defined solution to um, uh, meet that problem. Wonderful. You know, I have to say that when you hear the word judge, you tend to be afraid. You tend to feel like, you know, <laughs> judges, you know, judges are difficult. But ABH has the best, the warmest, the most wonderful judges. Not no one single judge makes you feel like you're in the wrong place. And Dr. Nina is one of them. Thank you so much for sharing these powerful words of wisdom with us. Um, Zara, uh, Zara Beatty Boating is the head of partnerships and programs at ABH. And every single time Zara comes to have a conversation with us, it's, it's, it's of essence because at least someone is committed to ensuring that there are no gray areas. And I say that because you have questions, you have concerns. So her presence is always to reassure you of what you feel that you're, you're lacking, you're not sure of. So I'm just gonna hand the mic over to Zara, who is going to be going ahead to give us a little bit more insight. Zara, over to you. Thank you, Anita. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, thank you all for your interest in ABH. Thank you to our partners who are here. Um, everyone who is on the call today represents the broader ABH community and we really wouldn't be where we are without you. So thank you all for joining. Um, my role today is quite simple. Um, I just want to give some insights into the ABH application and into the ABH journey. So we've heard from some of our heroes. They've talked about what their experience was like. We've also heard from our judges. They've shared what they expect. And I just want to give some insights from the ABH perspective around why we've designed the application form the way we have and why the ABH experience is what it is. 
Um, and so to start off with, I just want to say the ABH application is designed to understand you, your motivations, your potential, and importantly, the value your business brings to the wider society. And I think the best way to think about our application form is to probably think about an iceberg. So with icebergs, sometimes you can only see the very top, what's at sea level and above. Um, but there's always so much more to an iceberg. So if you're looking at what is a sea level and above, that might be five meters. But be below that, it could be actually 70 meters. Um, and similarly, at first glance, the application may seem quite long. I know many of you um, say that it's long, it's challenging, we ask so many questions, and it may seem like a hurdle. But I think if you take a step back to appreciate the various layers, you'll see that there's logic, there's purpose, substance, and value as you go deeper. So my, my job here today is to really deconstruct our application and take you through all these layers and give you insights into what we're looking for. So the very top of the iceberg is, a, is the founder's mission, vision, and value. And this is so important because it acts essentially as a, as a beacon, as a signal to tell us what it is you're about. What are the things that drive you? What is it that you're aiming to achieve? What is the world, the situation that you aim to create? Are you trying to create a world free from malaria? Are you trying to create a world free from, from hunger? And then what are your values? There are many ways to skin a cat, as they say. But what are the ways in which you aim to achieve what you set out to do? Is integrity at the center of, of, of your value system? Are you aiming to put the customer first? So the mission, vision, and values really allows us to say, how do you differ from all those that are out there? How do you differ from the other icebergs? And for, for ships that are passing along the sea, they can use that as a signpost to say, okay, this is this business, this is this founder, this is what they stand for, this is the world that they're trying to create. And so this is so important. The founder profile section allows us to really understand your mission, vision, and value. And throughout the application, you have a chance to reiterate this. So please take it seriously. Please let us know what it is you're trying to achieve, what drives you, how you're aiming to do so. And, 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 and the world you aim to create. Now, if we look at the next layer down, we have the problem and solution. And this is so critical because we need to understand if you're trying to build a particular vision, create a particular world, why are you trying to do so? What is the problem you're trying to achieve, you're trying to solve, and why is it pertinent? What is the magnitude of this problem? Why should we care about this vision that you're trying to, you're trying to drive towards? And so it's important that you articulate this in the problem section. But of course, we need to understand how you aim to achieve your goals, how you aim to solve the problem, your solution. So the problem and solution are an integral part to your application. Um, and it's important to show a clear linkage between the problem you stated and the solution you have on offer. So don't think about these as two separate or distinct categories. They are intrinsically linked to each other. So if you are offering a solution, we need to understand how this solution addresses a very specific problem and why that problem is important. This helps situate the rest of your application. If we go another layer down, after we've gotten some situational awareness, so we now know that, okay, the type of founder you are, what is driving you, what your values are, what your vision is, we understand why you, you, why you are on this particular mission, what the problem you're addressing is, and how you aim to do this. Now we need to understand the market, right? This is a big chunk of um, the iceberg. It's a meaty part of it. And why, why is it so? We need to know that the solution you have on offer is one going to be taken up by a significant number of people. It's going to impact the lives of, of many people. What is the potential number of people who could benefit from the solution that you have on offer? And then number two, how many people have actually taken up the solution and demonstrate that the solution that you have on offer is a right fit to the problem that you identified, right? So we need to see a demonstration of your um, your, your market traction. And we can see this through the number of customers that you have, the revenue that you have. But we also want to understand in, in an ideal scenario, what is the full set of the market that you're able to achieve, right? So this is another layer of the iceberg, of the application, of your business that is critical for us to understand. And I guess another way for you to think about it is, remember that at, at the end of the day, we're giving away grant funds, right? So we're giving away grant funds ranging from $100,000 to $300,000. And we need to be sure that your business is solid and can leverage those funds in a really productive way. And the application form allows us to say that, okay, if we give you those grant funds, you're able to take those grant funds 
and leverage it to, to push your solution out to a particular number of people and it will impact a particular group of people. So really use the market section to show us the potential of your solution, but also your track record. Now moving further down, we want to understand your competitive advantage and whether you can maintain as well as grow the market traction that you would have demonstrated above. And this is helpful for us, but more importantly, we think you need to know it for yourself. So you need to ask yourself some questions. What makes your product or service special or unique? How is it different from what is out there? We know that there will be competitors. And sometimes we've seen that uh, some entrepreneurs don't want to be honest as to what the competitors are, but we know that they exist. What is essential is that you can demonstrate that you know your strengths and weaknesses and you know how to leverage those. Um, and I'll, I'll just pull on an adage by Sun Tzu, who, is a great who was a great strategist. And he says, know thyself, know thy enemy, a thousand battles, a thousand victories. And what this means is that if you know your strengths and weaknesses, and you also understand your competitive strengths and weaknesses, you're better able to position yourself. You're better able to go into battle. You're better able to tailor your products or services to the right market because you know what your strengths are, you know how to leverage them. You also know what your weaknesses are and how to account for those. So it's really important that you have a, a good understanding of who your competitors are and how you plan to maintain whatever competitive advantage that you have. So this is a really critical um, section for us. And I would say at the bottom of the iceberg, and, and, and this is a really fun exercise for all those who are applying, is your future plans, articulating your future plans. And I think it's, it's at the bottom and it's important because in a lot of ways it underpins everything else, right? It is the world you're trying to create, the situation you're trying to resolve, that end goal. It's what will help get you out of bed in the morning. It's what helps you navigate the challenging times that you may, you may, you may face. But we want to know in concrete terms, what are the specific things you hope to achieve in particular timelines? So in five years, where do you see your business? How many lives would you have impacted? What, would, what are the key milestones that you would have reached? What do you need to get there? Who do you need to get there, right? So that's really important for us. Show us your ambition, but also tell us how ABH will help you along this journey, how ABH will help you get to um, those particular milestones. And so my advice for that section is to let us see uh, your ambition. And I would say lastly, throughout the deconstruction of this iceberg, if you will, or as we're looking at your business, something that is absolutely critical and is the glue that holds everything together, that holds your application together, but also your business is data, right? Data in a lot of, in a lot of ways is the oil that keeps things moving. If you have data, you are able to make informed decisions, but also when you use data in your application, you're able to show to us the validity of your arguments. We're able to see in very concrete terms that, okay, this problem is truly large because it impacts X number of people, right? We're able to see from the numbers that, okay, you truly have established good market share. So data, data, data throughout the application as you fill it out, ensure that data is the glue that holds everything together, that backs up your arguments and that shows that what you're presenting to us is valid and, and it's solid. So keep in mind the importance of data throughout the application. And think of the application, like I said, like an iceberg with several layers um, that will not only put you in a good place when you submit the application, but also leave you with a deeper understanding of yourself and of your business. Zara, you couldn't have said all of that any better. But before I let you go, one quick word of advice to all our applicants. We, we are days away from finishing. What's the one thing that Zara, you would advise them to do? One thing. I would say just put your best foot forward. A lot of people look at application, think it's too long, don't even try and just give it your best. Just give it your best and you never know where you'll end up. Give it your best. You'll never know where you end up. Zara Beatty Boating, thank you so much for all those words of advice and insight. And I do believe that coming up on your screen right now is a very important announcement that I do need to make to all, um, all of our participants here this evening, this morning, or this afternoon. Um, and this important announcement is coming to you because we do acknowledge that, um, well, 
let me not let the cat out of the bag. So I'm going to ask uh, my, my ABH team. Oh, there you go. So we figured you needed a little bit more time. We have given you an extension to the 20th of June. Um, and in essence, the ABH family, you will understand, understands you even more and understands your needs. So the 20th of June is the final, final, final deadline. Um, and I can't wait to see your applications. Um, <laughs> I can see the chat box. Yay. Yeah. ABH has given you an extension to the 20th of June. We understand your predicaments. Um, and of course, don't forget, you can apply both in English and in French. You can apply in English and in French. The English link is on the screen. And then, of course, you can do africasbusinessheroes.org slash fr slash login. If you have any issues, we'll be more than happy to help. And a lot of people are saying, oh my God, thank you. God has answered my prayers. <laughs> That's a good one. Yes, we, we know. We know life is crazy. Um, yes, moving right along, another part of our um, important uh, announcement today is for you also to take a look at what you know our application updates look like from a regional perspective. Um, 44% of our applications are from West Africa, 9.2 Central Africa, 24.8 from East Africa, 17.6 Southern Africa, and 4.4. Now, you know, it, it's also important that we understand, and I think I have to say this, I need my women to apply. Um, I love it, and we, we know that all the applicants and the winners have been women, and we're pushing and ABH is all about gender equality, the SDG goal. So we're really pushing. We need our women to apply. So if you have a friend, female entrepreneur, and she's thinking about it, tell her today to complete her application. And in terms of languages, we have English and French. Today, we even have English. Um, of course, we have French and Arabic simultaneous interpretation because we also do understand that we're all from different parts um, of the continent. Um, of course, area of operation for a lot of the businesses are rural, but we also have you know a good number, 48% being from urban. And then finally, and we're going to have this conversation at the end where we have um, our breakout sessions. We are all from different, different um, industries. And we felt it's important for you to know that 23% um, of our applications are in the agricultural space, 10% in the manufacturing, nine in ICT, eight in food and beverages, and seven in education and training. All of this goes to show that we're really proud of the applications that are coming in and we encourage you to do even more. I see that you are raising your hands and you've got questions, but I assure you during our breakout sessions, you will be able to ask any question you want. And also during the breakout session right here in the main room, if you have general questions, general concerns, Zara will be here to answer those questions. But we do have one more session before we go. And this session is crucial because even though we are proud of the work we do as ABH, we're even more proud about our partnerships and our collaborations. It just empowers us and it strengthens us. So I am giving the floor to um, some of our partners here. We've got um, SA um, Innovation Summit CEO, Buntu is here. Buntu, let me start off with you. Good afternoon, Buntu. I hope you're well. Good afternoon, Anita. Excellent, thank you, and good afternoon to everyone. Powerful. You? Butu, listen, we are alive and kicking, and we are about to send our applications because that $1.5 million is coming to someone's home. Uh, Buntu, before we go on to specific questions about our very proud partnership with you, uh, tell us very quickly what you do as um, SAIS. SAIS. Super. It's uh, an absolute honor to continue the, uh, you know, our partnership with ABH because we work with partners um, uh, like ABH who believe that entrepreneurs are the ones that build the continent. And so we, uh, as an innovation platform, uh, support the entrepreneurs by connecting them to the resources um, and opportunities that will help them to grow and scale. Uh, we do this through our annual innovation conference uh, that where we connect them to resources such as venture funding, investment readiness, mentorship, high tech commercialization, match and invest and pitching dance. Um, and also we run programs where we develop their capacity, prepare them for these opportunities and then showcase them at the summit. Um, that's about 100 pitches we run every year and $20 million of deals uh, that we facilitate annually. 
Wonderful. Um, I'll come back to you with some specific questions, but I also want to hear from uh, Caitlin Swiss, who's Senior Director of Global Community Operations at The Room. And uh, I have to say thanks so much for always prompting me um, in my emails about applying, even though I cannot apply. So Caitlin, um, I would like to know a little bit more, or I would love you to share uh, with our audience a little bit more about The Room, what it is, um, and of course, what it does. Caitlin, over to you. Great, thank you. Also, my background's not quite working, so next next time it's my turn, I'll turn it off. Um, but yeah, hi everyone. Um, I yeah, I'm here representing the room, and the room is on a like. Well, I'm part of ALX and the room, and the room is on a moonshot mission to place young Africans in dignified jobs. And so, while we're doing that, you know, we are developing talent and training talent, but we're also um, not forgetting about entrepreneurs because we like ABH know that entrepreneurs are going to unlock the opportunities of tomorrow. Um, and we know that entrepreneurship is one of the biggest levers that we can pull for the creation of dignified jobs. So um, yeah, so at The Room, we're committed to supporting and connecting young entrepreneurs, young people across the continent with the right opportunities. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Caitlin. And, and like I said, I just saw your email, your reminder email about the applications and well done. It's happening in real time. Um, Mathilde um, Schmidt-Ren is a Community and Programs Manager at VC4A. And Mathilde, I would love you to give us a little bit of insight about what uh, VC4A is. Sure. Thanks a lot, Anita. It's great to be here today. So some of you might already know VC4A, some of you might have also found the African Business Hero Competition on VC4A. So VC4A is the number one platform to connect African entrepreneurs with all kinds of opportunities. And we really see that in the broadest sense. So meaning we're, we're speaking about mentorship, we're speaking about learning opportunities, we're speaking about investment, we're speaking about startup programs. So the platform tries to combine everything. Um, so on VC4A.com, you can head on over and start learning in the online startup academy. It features a broad range of courses by ourselves, but also by, by many partners. So where you can really learn in your own pace and, and for free, and you can also earn certificates when you finish a course. Then we have um, from over 2000 partnering organizations such as ABH, we have their opportunities listed on the platform. So whenever there's a startup program open for application, you will most probably find that on VC4A. So that's also a good place to, to come back and, and check regularly if there's currently an application open where where you can really um, benefit from with your organization. And then we have a, a really uh, big investor network. So you have the ability to create a venture profile for your startup where you can introduce what you're doing, where you can show what you have already um, done in terms of track record, where you can also promote your fundraising round, which helps you to connect with the investor network on the platform. And last but not least, we have just reiterated the mentorship marketplace where you have the ability to browse in a in a bigger sort of pool of mentors you can filter by certain industries by stage by types of mentors by languages and so forth and you can start building mentorship relationships so yeah i'll keep it at this for now but yeah head yeah. on over to vcfire.com and start looking around and if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me thanks a lot again Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mathilde. And, and, and moving on to Malak. Malak, you're, you're joining us um, from Rise Up, where you're a program manager. Can you give us some insight on what Rise Up is all about? Um, hi, everyone. So yeah, uh, Rise Up is pretty. It's a very interesting um, entity because we we came together right after the Egyptian Revolution. And our main aim, uh, we started in 2013, but our main aim was really to connect all these youthful uh, young minds that are interested in creating business opportunities uh, to the resources that they needed to actually get on the ground. So the kind of resources, we have seven main uh, funnels that we walk through or we try and support through. So uh, know-how, talent, funding, creating a marketplace, a toolbox for what they need, media and inspiration. And in reality, these are the seven pillars that we believe startups need. And we work a lot with the private, se the private sector and with the government here in Egypt and across the region as well, um, and making sure that we can bring these opportunities, and these uh, different funds, these different training, educational opportunities for all these uh, young people who want to solve problems in their communities, business ideas. So that's in a nutshell. Oh, that's that's and what Rise Thank you. So Sorry. Um, no, no, go run, ahead, please. Go ahead. We run one of the biggest uh, events in the Middle East and North Africa, uh, connecting uh, startups in the region with all the resources that they need. 
Beautiful. Thank you so much. And Naomi Karungu is a marketing manager at AMI. Naomi, um, an, an overview of AMI from you, please. Yes, hi everyone and hi Anita. You've kept me glued to the screen. I love the energy. <laughs> Greetings from cold, chilly Nairobi, Kenya. Um, my name is Naomi, like you said, and I'll just give you an overview of what we do at AMI. AMI is an abbreviation for the African Management Institute. And we're so excited about this partnership with ABH because we have a similar mission to um, support African entrepreneurs. So we believe entrepreneurs and businesses provide the solutions to the biggest and most complex problems that we face as a continent. And we believe also that skilled people build thriving businesses and those thriving businesses create quality jobs. And those quality jobs are the ones that drive prosperity and dignity. So that is why we support ambitious entrepreneurs and businesses um, through our practical tools and training that um, I'll share more about. Wonderful. And, and the one thing that I neglected to talk about is how all of our partners have training um, platforms, I would say, and, and, and elements that could help you kind of boost your business, boost the knowledge of your business or the knowledge of the industry that you serve. So specifically, um, I think I want to come to you. I, I want to come to you, Buntu, um, specifically knowing that, you know, when it comes to money, it always seems to create or pose itself as, as a major, major hurdle. Yet it is hugely important. You know, the financial section, especially of our forms, are hugely important. So um, could you please share why the course um, SAIS offers um, a financial management course uh, to members of the ABH? Why, why is this course essential? Why is it important for you to offer this? Thank you, Anita. Um, <clears throat> that's a brilliant point because as you can imagine, we've got inspiring, amazing founders that are building just incredible businesses. And often these are people that are so passionate about the change that they wanted to see uh, that they they just had to uh, go out and figure it out. And often it's not in their industry expertise. They don't necessarily have experience in this space, um, but their passion pushes them to be experts in this in this place. But um, which means that they can tell the story. They know the customer, um, and and they can sell about selling yeah. is telling your story and being authentic but you when when you when it comes to running the business when it comes to talking with investors and scaling that across borders you also need to tell the stories in numbers and not and often founders have a challenge with um with thriving because of not being able to tell the financial management aspect of um of their business and so it doesn't mean that you have to be an accountant or uh, or that you have to be a CFO, but you do need to understand the fundamentals of financial statements. Um, things like how you manage your cash flow and and what and how that will impact your ability to grow month after month after month, as well as your balance sheets um, and and how you then structure that in order to leverage funding um, and also to build your assets and eventually build business in your value. Um, I mean, value in your business. And so the financial management is really to cover these fundamentals, um, as well as speak to um, how do we structure a strategy around building your business that will be unique to your business. All of these three areas that are quite fundamental will be unique to your business to use it so that you can um, scale your business. And so this, this is why we believe it's important. Of course, you also have to evaluate your business at some day. You have to cash mm -hmm. out. And and uh, and you have to be able to to speak that in numbers uh, so that you can cash out and, and build value on the continent. Buntu, thank you very much. Uh, Caitlin, um, one of the major things entrepreneurs are usually very scared of is talent acquisition. Um, but I see that, um, or I know that the room has, you know, partnered with 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 ABH essentially to 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 try and solve that problem for its heroes or its participants. Tell us a little bit about this program. How does it work? And how can our participants take advantage of it? Yeah, absolutely. So as I said earlier, the room is developing young talent, but we also are placing that talent. And so on the other side of the room are employers that, and companies that are hiring from our talent pool. So we have software engineers, virtual assistants, financial analysts. And as the room, we are um, working with companies with as a talent as a service model so 
um, companies come to us, um, get talent from us, and we're able to kind of handle all the back end. We take away a lot of the HR burden, all of the pieces that, you know, especially as a startup, especially as an entrepreneur, you may not have that infrastructure yet. Um, and you need a way to get fast talent. You need to get high quality, vetted, fast talent. And so the room is the kind of the go-to place that we hope that many companies will come to, but also that a lot of startups and entrepreneurs will come to because we're able to provide really great talent that we've trained and we've vetted and that we have nurtured um, for entrepreneurs across, um, across the entire world. So our talent is African, but we are able to provide talent. Um, and we've been able to, to provide that to a few of uh, past ABH participants as well and are really glad that they've been able to take us up on it. Caitlin, thanks so much. And thanks, you know, for, for giving us a little bit more insight. Of course, talent acquisition is a big problem. You don't have the talent, you're not, you literally are not attractive to investors. And that brings me to, to Mathilde. I mean, you've got the investment readiness program, second time in a row, partnering with ABH on this. What, what is this program? How is it designed? And how do our heroes and our participants benefit? Yes, um, thanks for asking about this as well. So for, um, yeah, we have since 2007 really built the investor network that we now also have on the V2A platform that we also invite once a year to the Africa stage, early stage investor summit. And um, we have worked with these investors together to create this signature curriculum that we teach in the investment readiness program. So it's really firsthand where participants really learn how does this think, um, how do they, how do, um, yeah, how, does, how do I choose between different types of investors? How do I choose between different types of funding, like equity versus debt, for example? So all of this is covered in this program. And we really um, teach with the help of these experienced investors. So just within this program already, very key, um, uh, yeah, key networking is already happening as well, besides sort of the, besides sort of the input that is taught. We also really already create um, yeah, real connections there. And we thereby help um, the uh, yeah the participants to secure external funding and to especially go into all these conversations later on very prepared and very confidently. So if I may say, do try to be part of the top ten. But if you don't, that's the value that our partners are bringing. You still have a chance to learn how to you know be a little bit more attractive to investors. Matilda, thank you so much for that. And it brings me to you know to rise up. Malak, you know, COVID came, COVID has done what it's got to do, but COVID also showed us that digital technology is the way to go. Without it, you are absolutely lost. And I know that you're partnering, Rise Up is partnering with Facebook to offer a free program called Digitize with Facebook. Share a little bit more about that program and how does it benefit our entrepreneurs, especially the ones who are tuning in today? So the best part about Digitize with Facebook is it allows access to um, everyone who wants to learn how to put their business online in a professional way using tools like WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook for Business, and having or building a strong online presence, and also integrating something that we like to call chatbots, which is the automated response that basically allows you to respond faster to your clients, ensure you don't lose any sales, and helps you scale, which is a huge problem that a lot of businesses face. They want to scale, but they don't have the manpower. And with technology nowadays, we've seen that there's so many ways that we can learn how to do that. And it's such a simple process because no matter where you are, you can sign up for the program and attend the live online training and get the opportunity to ask experts in the field on expert trainers that are certified by Meta, by Facebook, on how to build your online presence as a business. I am signing up today, Malak. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> and last but not the least, Naomi, um, the management development program is something that you are offering to former ABH finalists. What is what is it about? Yeah. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Anita, we believe that entrepreneurs and businesses are driving Africa forward through innovation and job creation. So um, one way uh, one way to work with businesses and entrepreneurs and, and how we do it is through workplace learning. 
with, within mm. their teams to help them be more effective, to help them to be more efficient. So this is what we are offering to the ABH um, finalists. And Anita, this will be a relevant example because we are coming off the Basketball Africa League that happened in Kigali. Um, wow. So I always, I always like to say that there's no Michael Jordan without Scotty Pippen or Larry Bird, yeah? Or to bring it closer home, there's no um, Eliud Kipchoge without his team of pace setters um, driving him to the medal. So in the same way, there's no great, um, a, a great team is very important for an entrepreneur and building that team. And you will fundraise successfully. Um, you'll get all the, all the marketing that you have to get to, to grow, but at the end of the day to deliver to your investors, um, you, you do need to ha have one team working together to achieve those key results. So that's the program we are offering the finalists as we believe the entrepreneur is the key driver to impact and growth. So we are equipping them with very, very practical tools um, uh, to, to lead their team, to empower their team and drive performance and growth. Naomi, let me borrow your words. And there is no ABH without our partners and our collaborators. Listen, we started this journey. You believe and you continue to believe in us. And that's why you're offering our participants all this value, all this gold. And I want to say thank you so much to SA Innovation Summit, Buntu Majaha. Um, a big thank you to the rooms, Caitlin Switz. A big thank you to AMI's marketing manager, Naomi Kurungu. Rise up, Malak. I am signing up. Watch out for my business name there. And of course, finally, to VC4A's Mathilde Schmitteren, thank you so much for participating today and um, watch your emails blaze up. I've seen um, Zara just putting in the chat box uh, links to um, links to some of your initiatives. Zara, thank you very much for doing that. Um, but yeah, all too soon, we've come to the end of this last leap. 